Here are five reasons to support the annual Catholic Appeal. One, emergency assistance to those in need. Two, inspiring young people to grow in their faith. Three, keeping our homebound connected in the faith. Four, crisis help for young families. And five, Catholic education, forming our future leaders in mind and heart. We are sowing the seeds of God's love with your contribution. Please donate today online at diospringfield.org. Coming up on this edition of Real to Real. A Focus Ministry Conference at UMass brings students closer to Christ. I'm Carolee McGrath. I'll have the story coming up. I'm Nick Morganelli. I'll have the story from Belchertown on the Knights of Columbus. They're cooking up some goodness for charity. And administering the sacrament of baptism during a pandemic. These stories are coming your way next on this edition of Real to Real. Hello and welcome to Real to Real. One of the key recipients of funds from the annual Catholic Appeal is the Newman Catholic Center at the University of Massachusetts in Amherst. There, students can keep in touch with their faith life while away at college. And an important part of the outreach work at the Newman Center are the focus missionaries who keep the college students connected to their faith through Bible studies and other activities at the Newman Catholic Center. A few weeks ago, focus missionaries and students from various Newman programs gathered virtually for the Seek 21 conference. Carolee McGrath has more. At the Newman Catholic Center at UMass, you could say people are seeking. They're seeking the love and mercy of Christ. And there, in the middle of a college campus, you can find him at Mass, Eucharistic Adoration, and in the many ministries available for students, including FOCUS. Well, FOCUS ministry, um, missionaries provide um, uh, the evangelization, you know, getting out on campus, you know, because they're this kind of the similar age to the college students. And so, therefore, they're able to kind of meet them in their space, you know, whether it's in the dining commons or on campus. The Focus missionaries, who are college graduates, lead Bible studies at UMass, do mentorship, and recently hosted the Seek 21 conference in early February. The national conference was supposed to be held in St. Louis, but this year, due to the pandemic, colleges across the country took part virtually. John Mullen is a Focus missionary. So we had SEEK, a conference held here that is typically held at a large city throughout the United States in one large city. And we've had it here at our campus virtually and also in person. So we've had over 40 students uh, encounter the gospel through great speakers as well as other sacraments. Springfield Bishop William Byrne was among the speakers for UMass. For the national conference, the lineup included Father Mike Schmitz, who has a popular video series and podcast and is the chaplain at the Newman Center at the University of Minnesota, Duluth. Also on the lineup, Chika Anyanwu, an international Catholic evangelist and author who wrote My Encounter, How I Met Jesus in Prayer and Sister Miriam James, a former D1 athlete who had a radical conversion and joined the Society of Our Lady of the Most Holy Trinity in 1998. Her story has been featured on EWTN and she's also a speaker for the Steubenville conferences. Maria Platero is a junior at UMass. So I thought it was a really beautiful time. Um, I think FOCUS has a wonderful way of bringing incredible Catholic speakers and communities together, especially in this time when things are really difficult. They allowed for students to have an opportunity to have that community while still being, for me, in my dorm room. Students also took part in all-night Eucharistic adoration at the Newman Center and in small group discussions. Only about 20% of American Catholics, and there are 67 million of us, go to church on a regular basis. And that was before COVID hit. What Focus Ministries does is inspire young adults who are no longer being told by their parents that they have to go to church. And in turn, these young adults become on fire for Jesus and their Catholic faith. I'm on fire because I know who I am. I know that I'm loved by Christ, and I, from that deep, Part of my heart, I want to make sure that everyone knows that. I want to make sure that everyone knows their value, the worth. I mean, every single student that we encounter desires truth and, is, and honestly desires the love and mercy of Christ. So we strive to show that to others as focused missionaries.
And long after students graduate, the hope is that they remain ambassadors for Christ in a world that's still seeking him. Reporting for Real to Real, I'm Carolee McGrath. I have a confession to make. I love bread, I love baguettes, English muffins, you name it. As long as it's got bread in the title, I like it. I can't have it if a farmer doesn't plant a seed and grow that to its fullness into wheat. You see, we don't have the good things if we don't sow the seeds. That's the theme of this year's annual Catholic appeal. Sowing the seeds, and you and I have an opportunity to be farmers, to make our 43 ministries that are supported by this effort possible. From the protection of human life, to uh, scholarships for kids, to Catholic communications, uh, all of these are done through your generosity. We're just getting underway. And I ask you to be generous this year so that we can have the fruit of bountiful harvest thanks to the seeds that you sow. Thank you in advance for your generosity. God bless you. And remember, the important work of our own Catholic Communications Ministry is also a beneficiary of your support of the annual Catholic Appeal. So if you haven't donated yet, you can make your 2021 gift online at diospringfield.org. And we thank you in advance. The holy water fonts remain dry, as do the baptismal fonts in our churches nearly one year after the COVID-19 pandemic began. For new parents, it's meant delaying their baby's baptism. The first sacrament, the introduction into the Catholic faith, has a long tradition of taking place soon after birth. Even after churches reopened limits to family presence at baptisms prompted some parents to wait. Kathy Harrington takes a look now at baptism in the time of COVID. Meet Charles and Archer Breton, Logan and Elliot Crandall, Adrena Gumla, Aurora May Minier, and Julia Lemelin just seven of the newest members of the church, the Body of Christ. At two parishes recently, families gathered in the early afternoon for the long-awaited sacrament of baptism. For Deacon Thomas Rickson at St. Elizabeth Parish in Ludlow, it's twins, Logan and Elliot. It's not the usual baptism where the church is full, you know, for each, for each child that's being baptized. And we only baptize two now, two at a time. Two at a time works well for the Crandall family, who welcomed their twin boys last summer at the height of the pandemic. They were born at Bay State uh, Medical Center in Springfield, and there was limited visitors at the time. There was no visitors to the emergency department, and I was really the only visitor that could be there for her. Emily, who grew up in St. Elizabeth Parish, and Brandon knew their twins would be baptized even before they were born. Not only is it just tradition in our families on both sides, but it's just a nice foundation for them to have like we had also. It was just an adjustment having newborn twins, so we were giving it some time. Even with a little extra time, one godparent wasn't able to make the baptism. A grandmother is serving as the proxy. Following COVID directives, the church is cleaned after mass and after each baptism, and people are distanced by rows. And while the liturgy is the same. But when we do baptize, we use a pitcher of water that we bless. So Elliot we'll baptize the children over the font, but there's no running water in the font. And of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> while the deacon, the family members, and everyone else in church are wearing masks, the focus is on the angelic faces of the twins. Elliot and Logan, the Church of God receives you with great joy. In her name, I sign you with the sign of the cross of Christ our Savior. Welcome to St. Thomas Church. Deacon and grandfather Jim Marcus greeted the families with a warm welcome that included a message. Here, each will always find support for their children, reminding them that Jesus said, let the children come to me. Pope Francis calls it a beautiful homily when a baby cries in church. With five baptisms this Sunday at St. Thomas the Apostle in West Springfield, it was a glorious homily. This was our biggest crowd that we've had since, uh, since our COVID situation started. So we were happy to baptize five, four families, five children today. Michael, 
I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. No baptisms were performed during the shutdown last spring. They resumed last June, and the three deacons and two priests have been able to keep up until December. With no baptisms in December, four families were prepared for this Sunday. We're trying to be as cautious as we can. We don't certainly don't want to spread anything, so we're following all the rules and regulations. It, obviously, it would be nice not to have to put gloves on to you know, make the sign of a cross on the baby's forehead, but if that's what we have to do, that's, that's what we're doing. Zachary Breton grew up in the parish. He and wife Megan say it's important for their children to grow up in the faith. While they prepared for the baptism remotely, there was no hesitation bringing their Irish twins into church today. And of the Holy Spirit. I knew it would be pretty well organized and everyone would be spread out, so I wasn't, we weren't worried at all. So, so Audrina Elaine, I baptize you. Barbara and Nicholas Gumla say they are pleased with the extra efforts taken. I was baptized here. I was a student of the Diocese of St. Thomas School. And it's important for her to make her sacraments and understand what it is to have God in your life. Julia Rose. <laughs> I baptize you in the name. <laughs> well, we got to make sure we get the water there. We baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. It's just like just like Chubby told, right? Julia is the Limelin's third child. Her siblings were baptized at three months, so Joseph and Kyla tried waiting out COVID, but with the baby's first birthday approaching, they decided not to wait any longer. So it's a smaller family gathering. We were able to have both grandparents, both sets of grandparents, and the godparents. Um, normally we would have uh, aunts and uncles, but with the limited amount of people, um, it would just be too much because they all have kids and everything. Taking turns for the traditional baptism photos, there's plenty of noise to make up for the limited size family gathering. For Real to Real, I'm Kathy Harrington. And hopefully as the COVID vaccine reaches more of our population, we'll see a return back to our treasured gatherings to celebrate the sacraments. And still to come on this edition of Real to Real, Dan Dumas takes a look at the latest news from the Diocese of Springfield. These stories are still ahead on Real to Real. The Chalice of Salvation, your weekly spiritual connection. I'm Sharon Rulier, your guest host, inviting you to take time out of your busy day and join us Sunday morning. We welcome Father Jack Schaefer as our Mass presider and honor fallen police officer Ashley Gwinden on the fifth anniversary of her death. The Chalice of Salvation, Sunday mornings at 10 on 22 News and coming up next on Fox 23 WXXA. Here are five reasons to support the annual Catholic Appeal. One, emergency assistance to those in need. Two, inspiring young people to grow in their faith. Three, keeping our homebound connected in the faith. Four, crisis help for young families. And five, Catholic education, forming our future leaders in mind and heart. We are sowing the seeds of God's love with your contribution. Please donate today online at diospringfield.org. Providence Place, owned by the Sisters of Providence, an ideal rental setting for retirees to continue their active, independent lifestyles. We have bright one and two bedroom apartments, a magnificent chapel with daily mass, restaurant style dining, and wellness and entertainment programs. Call for a tour, 413-534-9700. Butcher, baker, candlestick maker, I didn't care what they grew up to be as long as they were happy. To give up marriage and children just seems like too much to walk away from. He seems to think he's making a real difference in people's lives, and he's so happy. Isn't that what's most important? I never would have imagined our son as a Catholic priest.
I'm Dan Dumas with your Real to Real News Briefs. Those seeking to become Catholic are one step closer after last Sunday's rite of election. They will be welcomed into the church in their various parishes during the Easter Vigil. Carolee McGrath explains. Springfield Bishop William Byrne presided over the rite of election and call to continuing conversion at St. Michael's Cathedral in Springfield. Three catechumens and 13 candidates enrolled in the Rite of Christian Initiation of Adults, or RCIA, took part. They'll complete the sacraments of initiation, which include baptism, First Communion, and confirmation during the Easter Vigil. It was a much smaller group this year due to the pandemic, yet those gathered, including Jose and Berenice Lopez, say they're excited. The couple was married 20 years ago by a Justice of the Peace. After they're both confirmed on Easter at Our Lady of the Sacred Heart Parish in Springfield, they're planning to get married in the church. I've been, I've been away from the church for, you know, since I was a teenager, you know, like I told Father Ryan, uh, yeah, I just wanted to uh, go play football on Sundays. And, and uh, I think it took my, uh, this past November, I lost my mom and, uh, and you know, she was always trying to push me to go to church and, and I never listened to her. And, and I think this was the calling. And I, I think it took her death to actually bring me back. Melissa Canavan will also be making her confirmation at the Easter Vigil at St. Mary's in Lee. Religion has been part of my life all my life, um, but because of circumstances, I kind of stepped away for a bit, and then two years ago, or about a year ago, my best friend um, had a little girl, and she asked me to be her godmother, and so that's what really called me back to complete my confirmation. And Last March, shortly before the state shut down, more than 100 catechumens and candidates took part in the right of election. It is a very different year. Um, compared to last year. <laughs> last year we had about 120 catechumens and candidates here. This year we have 16. That doesn't mean that there are not more people preparing um, for sacraments in our church, in our diocese. Um, just because of COVID, everything is very different. People are afraid to gather. Um, parishes are not doing RCIA preparation as they normally have in the past. Um, so it's a very different year, but God is still calling people into his church, and we're very grateful for that. The right of election is for catechumens who were never baptized. The call to continuing conversion is for candidates who have been baptized Catholic or in another Christian denomination. They too will complete their sacraments of initiation at the Easter Vigil. And this is an ancient ritual of the church. This isn't something that we dreamed up yesterday, say, could we do this in a nice way? This goes back to the very earliest church. This is how our fathers and mothers in the faith in the third, fourth, uh, throughout the church came into the church, into a process of preparation, of scrutinies, and then being elected by their community, coming before the successor of the apostle, being presented to him, so that then through the Easter waters they could come to new life. The Easter Vigil is April 3rd. In Springfield, I'm Carolee McGrath. Capping off a great Catholic Schools Week in the Diocese, Springfield Bishop William Byrne recently visited St. Mary's in Westfield, celebrating Mass there for students and staff. Springfield Bishop William Byrne celebrated Mass at St. Mary's in Westfield, capping off Catholic Schools Week. Bishop Byrne visited schools that week, giving praise to teachers and administrators for giving students the opportunity to be back in class. And so it is that we celebrate the great gift, and not only that, the heroes that are Catholic educators, the teachers and the administration and faculty who have gone and done whatever they could so that you all could be here in person. The theme for Catholic Schools Week was Faith, Excellence, Service. Benjamin Howes, a junior at St. Mary's, won the essay contest. You learn about like normal knowledge and science and everything, but a Catholic education allows you to see something greater, something divine. It anchors you to you know, a fundamental truth and it allows you to know that there's a, a divine creator out there that uh, has this merciful to you, that loves you. Ali Goodrow is also a junior. 
I've been going to St. Mary's for 13 years. So Catholic education has played like a big part in my life. I mean, my parents went to Catholic schools growing up. So, I mean, I kind of continued the same path as they did. So, um, I mean, Catholic education just means like I get to experience school just like everyone else, but I also get to like explore my faith and learn more about it while in school. In his homily, Bishop Byrne explained that Catholic schools educate the whole child mind, body, and soul. Like it says in the gospel, you can have the whole world, but if you don't have your soul, then you're never going to be complete. And you look at it, you look at the world and you see a lot of people who have made it to such great heights, and yet they don't know true joy, they don't know true peace. Catholic schools point to the true peace that only Christ can give. And Bishop Byrne was also in the national spotlight this past week as a guest on the Newsmax Network Evening News, where he spoke about Lent. We want to make sure that we're not just saying, hey, it's the Catholic Club, and what did you give up? And no, 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 not that Chardonnay for me, or forget the chocolate, that we aren't just wearing it on our sleeve, but that we're really developing and growing in our spiritual life. And Bishop Byrne's book, Five Things, also is in the news, having won an Illumination Gold Medal in the Catholic Book category. The Illumination Award annually recognizes the best Christian books. These winners come from well-known publishers and independents with a passion for the Word. Their works challenge, comfort, enlighten, and engage. Congratulations, Bishop Byrne. And remember, you can always stay informed on all the latest news in the Catholic Church locally and beyond by logging on to iobserve.org. There you can read articles written by our Catholic communication staff, as well as view archived episodes of Real to Real. That's iobserve.org. I'm Dan Dumas, and those were your Real to Real news briefs. You are watching Real to Real, your window on the world around you. Here again is your Real to Real host, Sharon Rulier. And finally, during the pandemic, we haven't been able to break bread together with fellow parishioners in large gatherings. Many organizations over the years have used these opportunities to raise funds for parishes and schools. The Knights of Columbus Council at St. Francis of Assisi Parish in Belchertown has found success with their Meals to Go. Here's Nick Morganelli with the appetizing story. On the third Saturday of the month, at the parish center adjacent to the town green in Belchertown, you can support local charities by purchasing a hot dinner to go for just $10, thanks to the efforts of the Knights of Columbus at St. Francis of Assisi Parish. Thank you very much. You. Careful there now. You need help? No, I'm good. All right. Thank you. Take care. God bless. We put out a Google Doc, and we had some people order online. So when they come, they will just specify who they are, and then we'll come down and bring up their dinner. They recommend ordering ahead, but always cook enough for anyone driving by that wants to pick up some dinner. Can we have a dinner that has not been ordered? Yep, how many? One. Just one? Yes. All right. We're prepared to make about 120 dinners. All right, here you go, yeah, thanks, sir. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Stay warm. We've had two sausage grinder dinners, which went very well. They did the shopping, they did the uh, cooking. They were here this morning cooking. They've gotten the sauce ready, they've got the spaghetti. Some of the kids from the members' families are here to help us out. So they, they're our young legs. Well, it takes a team effort to put together these monthly meals and it's all for a great cause for many of the charities that the Knights of Columbus supports. Some of the uh, charitable works we do are based with the Knights of Columbus and also some locally here in our council and community. We do wreaths across America, we do coats for kids, and we also do some local stuff. We have high school scholarships that we sponsor here uh, in the community. We also have other events like a gift card drive for, during the holidays, by which we donated that back to the uh, parish uh, food pantry to give out uh, during the holiday season. So, and there's several different other charities that we support. If there's a member in need, if there's someone in the community in need, if uh, somebody needs something built or, you know, the, we've had requests to build ramps to people's houses and, uh, you know, wheelchairs for people that are bound and uh, a van for someone, um, that's where the money goes. We, we don't, we just make the money to give it away. This local council is based in a parish, but not all councils are. 
On our parish website, we have a page for the Knights of Columbus because we are a parish-based council. And also mainly our Facebook page. Uh, we post things to facebook.com slash KFC. Their local council has 140 members, but there are nearly two million worldwide that act out of love as the hands and feet of Jesus in our communities. The organization was founded in 1882 by Blessed Reverend Michael McGivney, a young parish priest in New Haven, Connecticut, who was beatified in October 2020. The Knights of Columbus, Catholic men building a bridge back to faith. There's much work to be done in this world, good work, necessary work, and that's what the Knights do every day. We invest our time, our effort, and our resources into our values, charity, unity, fraternity, patriotism. If these pillars inspire you, your local council always welcomes new membership. In Belchertown, they have a presence at the fair each autumn and hold many other activities during the year to support their charitable giving. We look for anybody who's a Catholic gentleman, age 18. We're a family-based organization, so we're always looking for men who want to be participating. We have a lot of family activities that we do to support our families and our brothers. It's very easy to join. It's a gratifying thing to do the work of God, to reach out and helping neighbors. For more information on membership to this council, email kfcbelchertown at gmail.com. You can visit iobserve.org for a link to your local council. And of course, you can find the monthly dinner to go menu on the St. Francis of Assisi website or visit Belchertown Knights of Columbus on Facebook. Saturday, March 20th, is a corned beef sandwich dinner. For Real to Real, enjoying a meal for charity, I'm Nick Morganelli. And if you're in Belchertown on the third Saturday of the month, be sure to look for the nights from 3 to 6 p.m. at the St. Francis of Assisi Social Center, 14 Park Street, opposite the Town Common parking lot. Definitely beats cooking, that's for sure. And the proceeds all go to a good cause. And this week we close on a sad note for this will be the final Reel to Reel airing on Albany's WXXA Fox 23. For the past few years, we've partnered with that station to ensure our Berkshire viewers have access to Reel to Reel. For Berkshire County viewers, you can now view our program on WWLP 22 News Saturday evening at 7 p.m. And for those in the Albany area, you can still view our program weekly on the Catholic TV Network and on our YouTube channel. You can access that on iobserve.org where you can also get the latest news for the Catholic Church, both here in the Diocese of Springfield and around the world. That's our news and information site, iobserve.org. And you can also stay in touch with us on Facebook at Catholic Communications. I'll see you again next week for another edition of Real to Real, your window on the world around you. See you then. Real to Real is a production of the Catholic Communications Corporation, funded in part by the annual Catholic Appeal and the support of you, our faithful viewers.